and again this is a book that I'm reading fraction of the book and there's a lot more detail mm-hmm. of where these feelings are are coming from And it's coming from situations like this. The point man had gotten 30 meters in front of me by the time we reached the foot of the hill, and I knew that once we had reached the crest, we would be back in control. As I called to him to slow his pace and allow the rest of us who were strung out behind him to close the gap, an automatic weapon opened fire from the top of the hill. The point man dropped immediately as we all did, but I could see as the enemy fire raked the sandy area between him and me that he had already taken a round in the leg. He lay there exposed and vulnerable as the fusillade tattooed the earth around us, and in the confusion I realized clearly that he was going to die if I could not alter their pattern of fire. I pulled myself to my feet and headed toward him, but the enemy gunner shifted his fire to meet my charge, and I dived behind a rotting log only 10 or 15 meters from where I'd begun, and then abandoned my only John Wayne-style feat of the war. My movement had distracted the Viet Cong soldier on top of the hill from the wounded point man and he poured round after round after round into the base of the log shielding my body. As I attempted to burrow into the sand behind the log, I looked down and saw a colony of red ants going about their business as if nothing were happening. I was fascinated by the little creatures only inches from my nose and knew that I must be losing my equilibrium to be thinking about ants while the terrain around me was being pockmarked with lead. I forced myself to refocus on the threat of the hill and by now the Marines behind me were returning fire. Within minutes it was over and the enemy gunner used the reverse slope of the hill to make his getaway while one of my fire teams scrambled up the near side. When we had secured the hill, I hurried over to the point and watched helplessly as Doc administered an injection of morphine and Watson called up the second helicopter medevac of the day. It was life in the Riviera for all of them. And it was, well, I'll go to the book. Captain Woods devised an ambitious operation as a way to settle the score in the Riviera. He knew that it would be unacceptable from a political standpoint to simply level VM Dong, the hamlet at the edge of the Riviera, known Viet Cong stronghold from which we had been taking increasing amounts of hostile fire. But he also knew that our South Korean allies were free to operate without political constraints that figured so heavily into all of our planning. He therefore seized on the idea of a joint operation in which our company would be lifted at first light into the Riviera. We would then form a cordon around VM Dong and a South Korean company would sweep through the village and drive the unsuspecting enemy into our fields of fire. Whatever else the Koreans did in the village was their own business, but their reputation for brutality, we all knew that the village would be loath to support the Viet Cong so openly in the future. If our timing was right, the operation could turn out to be a turkey shoot. Beyond that, we would be on the offense for a change, and the boost to morale would be of immense value. 